اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر لا الہ الا اللہ واللہ اکبر وللہ الحمد اللہ اکبر على ما هدانا اللہ اکبر على ما رزقنا من بہیمت الانعام والحمد للہ على ما ابلانا بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الصلاة والسلام على محمد وآلہ الطیبین الطاہرین اما بعد فقد قال اللہ سبحانہ تبارک و تعالی ان صلاتی و نسکی و محیایا و مماتی للہ رب العالمین Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death is for Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Quran, chapter number 6, ayah number 162. My dear, dear sisters and brothers, uh, today we celebrate Eid al-Adha, the Eid of the sacrifice. Over the past few days, millions of sheep, goats, cows and camels have been sacrificed and their meat has been shared with the poor all over the world. Our own Qurbani, the ritual sacrifice that we make today, marks a defining moment that took place many thousands of years. Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Abraham turned to his son Ismail and told him about a dream in which Allah asked him to sacrifice that which is dearest to him without hesitation ismail told his father to do as allah commanded he ismail would remain patient and persevere let us see what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what the quran tells us about this amazing incident in surah safat surah number 37 from my number 100 to 112, Allah describes the conversation between the father and the son. So he says, <coughs> Oh my Lord, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh my Lord, grant me a righteous son. So we gave him the good news of a boy ready to suffer and forbear. Then when the son reached the age of serious work with him, he said, Oh my son, I see in vision that I offer you in sacrifice. Now see what is your view. The son said, Oh my father, do as you are commanded. You will find me if Allah so wills one practicing patience and constancy. So when they had both submitted their wills to Allah and he had laid him prostrate on his forehead for sacrifice, we called out to him, O Ibrahim, you have already fulfilled the vision. This is how we reward those who do right. For this was obviously a trial and we ransomed him with a momentous azim sacrifice azim and we left this blessing for his for him among generations to come in later times peace and salutation to ibrahim thus indeed do we reward those who do right for he was one of our believing servants and we gave him the good news of ishaq a prophet one of the righteous. So this these were some of the ayat of Surah Safat talking about the sacrifice of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. In short, this is the story of Hajj. So what is Hajj? The Hajj is the sacrifice of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam his sacrifice forms the climax of the Hajj. 
So let's take a brief look at the importance of the Hajj. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala require us to do the Hajj at least once in our lifetime? Hajj is something that brings together all the essential parts and aspects of our faith. So it's not just one ibadat. Hajj is many different ibadat, many different uh, things that we perform and do in our day-to-day -day work and they become essential parts of the Hajj. So in itself, it's a, it's a big subject, but in a few minutes I have, I want to touch on a key, on a few key aspects. Hajj is an epic journey on three levels, geography, history, and self-discovery. So geography, and it's, it's all related to experiential ibadat. Ibadat with which something uh, a person experiences in his lifetime and most probably and most of the time those people who go for Hajj remember it for life and especially if it is their first Hajj they would not easily forget that and this is due to due to all the three factors that I've uh, mentioned geography history as well as self-discovery so you know when you are doing Hajj when you go for Hajj you are not uh, you, are, you don't do it at your home or in a masjid uh, you go to completely a different foreign land so so the first thing is that there is geographic involved so it's a form it's a journey from our homes to Makkah and Medina and to those desert lands where the story of Islam began and towards which we turn our faces in 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 prayer so when a person goes there for the first time it becomes part of his journey part of his life and that is something that people would not normally easily uh, forget about. Secondly, it's a lesson in history. So Hajj is a journey through history. We visit the cradle of monotheism, the place where Prophet Ibrahim built the first place of worship dedicated to one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here is Makkah. Allah asked Ibrahim to sacrifice what he loved most clearly, most uh, dearly. Ibrahim recognized this as a supreme test. He would have to sacrifice his son to Allah. Both father and son obeyed the divine command without flinching and without resistance. Ibrahim sharp knife lay on Ismail's tender throat, but just before it uh, severed and cut, the jug jugular vein, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed the sheep where Ismail's body lay and Ismail's life was spared. So when we celebrate Eid al-Adha, the festival of the sacrifice, we remember Ibrahim alayhis willingness, his willingness to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was prepared to give up his most beloved son. So here, here is a lesson for us. So this teaches us that, that as Allah's servants, we too must obey without question and without hesitation. We too must be prepared to give up whatever else besides Allah is so near and dear uh, to us. We too must learn to tame our selfish desires and we must learn how to fulfill our Lord's bidding. Hajj takes us on a historical journey beyond Ibrahim salam, way back to the beginning of the history, uh, human history, to the time of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, because there is a there is a mountain there which is called Jabal Rahma. This 
so it is also highlight the one of the highlight of the Hajj is therefore the gathering of more than three million pilgrims normally on the plain of Arafat at the foot of Jabal e Rahmah. So when people go to Arafat, they go to the Jabal e Rahmah. Why, why is it called Jabal e Rahmah? The Jabal e Rahmah means Mount of Mercy, and pilgrims, Hujjaj, pray and make du'a, supplicate there begging forgiveness maghfirat for their sins and they rededicate themselves to a life of obedience to allah so this jabal rahma is a place where allah Adad adam alayhi salam made this to a rabbana zalamana anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin o oh, our lord we have truly wronged our own souls and if you do not forgive us and have mercy on us the uh, we will be among the losers so it is therefore uh, called jabal e rahma and it is therefore fitting that every year from the beginning to the end of human history hujjaj pilgrims should make this journey to seek forgiveness for their own wrongdoing in the same place where the first sin was forgiven it is therefore also a supreme expression of hope that despite all our human frailties and uh, transgressions and dhulm on our nafs, there is always time for sacrifice, time for sincere repentance. We must use our time to mend our, our errant uh, ways. So, and the last part is about self-discovery. So Hajj is not only a journey through geography and history, it is perhaps most importantly an inward journey towards our own center to the human heart, not the physical heart that pumps blood through our veins, I mean the spiritual heart, the qalb, the locus of our personality. What emotions, what desires, ambitions and obsessions lurk in the innermost recesses of the spiritual heart. By traveling to Kaaba, the center of Islam, the local point of the qib, focal point of the Qibla, the directional axis for all our prayers, we have also made a journey inwards. We are also seeking the Kaaba and Qibla of the human heart are those ambitions desires and innermost longings really worthy of a true servant of god are we focused on the right priorities beyond selfishness and pettiness what is our real face in this great drama of life around us what is our place in the whole cosmic scheme of things where have we come from and where are we going to Inna Allah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. So this is a reminder for all of us. The sacrifice of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam is so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it into part of his own ibadat. Perhaps just to make us realize that this is how we should be and this is how we should get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this concludes our first khutbah. The second khutbah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-la'in al-rajim bismillahi rahman al-rahim wa bihi nasta'in wa huwa khayru nasirin wa mu'in wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin Hajiz also a reminder of death every pilgrim is wrapped in two sheets of plain white cloth which knows with no sewing no stitches these are the same sheets of cloth that will cover us when we are buried in a way we are on pilgrimage wearing a burial shroud this is the only time we will wrap ourselves in our own shrouds when we die someone else will do the wrapping for us this is a humbling and sobering experience 
when you look around you, you see more than 3 million people all dressed exactly the same in two sheets of plain white cloths. You cannot tell the difference between a state president and a taxi driver, a millionaire and a cleaner who tidied your hotel room yesterday. You can only see yourself and your fellow pilgrims exactly as Allah sees all of us, stripped of all our pretensions, stripped of all our designer clothes and our outward signs of wealth, nationality, culture and social status. On how do we see one another as we really are, individual human souls, distinguishable only by the purity of their hearts and the content of their character. This is exactly how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us in the final analysis. This is all that matters. So if we remember this message, we would no never be racist. Racism is a, a, a big problem today and many scholars are coming out and talking about it and we should address this problem among ourselves in the Muslim Ummah because Islam can never condone racism and Hajj is a reminder that we are all the same. The, the only thing that matters is what's in our heart, our intentions, our, um, our qalb and that's what we will take uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These worldly, outwardly things, our race, our culture, our nationality, our wealth, our money, children, family, people, anything that we may have does not matter. It is nothing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's conclude this khutbah with this uh, dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are we are your humble servants and human beings today are suffering from a very great problem especially the people who have nothing who are poor who have got nothing of this world they are suffering and uh, they cannot come out of this problem unless you have your mercy upon them so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly we ask you for forgiveness for our sins that we may have committed and we ask for forgiveness and maghfirat for our uh, marhumin those who have left us and passed away uh, during this pandemic and uh, even before that and oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa grant the shifa to those who are sick, who are not well and are bedridden, are in hospitals or in their homes by the sake of Ahlul Bayt salam, by the sake of Bimari Karbala, Imam Zainul Abideen salam. And the most important dua is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the zuhur and reappearance of our 12th Imam, Imam Mahdi Akhir al Zaman, alayhi salam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.